Um, so hey y'all, uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Talking Spit for another episode. And this month is March Madness, and I'm gonna be featuring some phenomenal athletes, former athletes, and all the great things that they have. And the man to my right is uh my own personal inspiration growing up in North Minneapolis and seeing the great things that he did. And I'm super honored to for one to even get to meet you and have a conversation with you and have you on this platform. So thank you so much for being willing. And um, you don't really need no introduction. He could just tell y'all who he is and his name speaks volumes for himself. So introduce yourself to the people and tell them who you are. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Such a great introduction, but I'm Khaled Elamine, uh, born and raised in Minneapolis. Um, you know, holding it down for Minneapolis, for Minnesota uh, in whole, but, uh, you know, just a representative, one of many, and I'm here to tell my story. Absolutely. Absolutely. So growing up in North Minneapolis, North side, we outside, polar for life. Okay. Mm-hmm. Listen. Yeah. I went to North because of you and Timor. I'm not even going to lie to you. And that's not just being, I'm not trying to, you know, boast you a little bit. That's just a God honest truth. If it wasn't okay. for y'all setting that standard, I would have never went to North. Okay. Um, so like growing up in North Minneapolis, I knew that there was a lot of things that were challenging for me. Um, so I'll basically want to ask you, like, what was some of your challenges, especially being in the community that you were? Was it as bad as it was when I was in high school? Because I was struggling with, I lost three friends from gun violence. Um mm-hmm just from my freshman to my senior year. So I'm kind of, I was always curious of what it was like for y'all before when y'all were in school. Well, um, I mean, there was always challenges. There always is challenges growing up being teenagers, right? But yeah. um, it wasn't so much more of us battling um, as far as, you know, gun violence or or things like that, even though it was around us. But um, for the most part, for myself, I can speak for myself. Uh, you know, I was battling teenager uh, of type of things, you know, the, the things that we get into, um, you know, trying to uh, hang with um, people that weren't into the things that I was into um, or what I was trying to do. But, you know, I always wanted to hang out with them, so to speak. You know what I mean? So hanging with the right crowd was was a lot of uh, kind of say the obstacles coming up for me. And um, being that I was from the north side, I wanted to, you know, I was getting a lot of notoriety. You know, coming up being young, um, I was very popular. Um, so I, I was fighting with myself early on, was trying to show that, uh, you know, I didn't have a big head or, um, you know, I wasn't, uh, you know, I don't know if selling out was the right word or, yeah. or whatnot. But, you know, wasn't wasn't, you know, being the person that I wasn't and, and remembering where I came from. So I kind of always wanted to be that down earth person and yeah. try to remain that. And I think sometimes I try too hard. Uh, to try to prove that I was still, you know, L, little L or or college from the neighborhood, you know. And a lot of times that got me in trouble because, you know, being that <clears throat> I had a lot of notoriety, I was popular, you know, because I, I was extremely good Extremely popular. He trying to be a lot of y'all, extremely popular. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I had the, the, the spotlight on me. So, um, you know, certain things I, I couldn't do. And, and, you know, as a youngster, you try to, you know, fight that a little bit and yeah. you, you still try to do those things, you know, you're not supposed to do. And, um, you know, it, it bit, bit me in the butt a few times, got me in trouble, but I was able to, you know, grow out of that stage and, and really move past that. But I was really fighting hard with that early on, um, with the early fame that, or the early, uh, I should say success that I had. Absolutely. Up. Thank God for uh Timor tells me tells me all the time. She said, Thank God for there was no social media when I was in high school. <laughs> and I was like, I think because in a we, good way and a bad way, but right. with, sorry, yeah. I, to be honest, in the in the bad ways in a sense, I don't think you guys got the credibility that y'all deserve. Like I feel like, you know, all these kids are like halfway decent. I'm not knocking the kids right now. Right. 
right. but I get it. compared to y'all and the kids mm-hmm. now, it's not even close. And that's my own personal opinion. Don't nobody crucify me and say right. whatever. But these kids that's going viral and getting all this notoriety, they don't don't get me wrong. I think they deserve it because the work that they're putting in, but they're not as good as y'all were. Not at all. Not even close. That's I I think it's different times, a different era, different style of uh, of play. Um, I think a different mentality also. So all of that stuff goes into, you know, what happened back then and what's happening now. But uh, there's guys that can hoop now. But it's like you said, there's some guys that we had a tough time back in the day, you know? Right. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I would ever, to, say it, to say it nicely, you know what I mean? To say I, it listen, nicely. I'm honest. I'm a high school basketball coach, and I get to see it in and out. I'm like, I would average 60. And that's saying oh, something Oh, okay. That's oh. saying something for me. I'm just being completely honest. My, my athletes be joking. I'm like, y'all understand? I can't even shoot. Like, I mean, right now, yeah, it, it, it's tough, especially seeing the Minneapolis conference like how it is right now. And um, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine the conference being like that when I played, you know, I, I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think about if the conference like that. So, um, yeah, it's tough. It's just, it's just a different time right now. It's, it's a different time. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, but speaking into like some of your success, you won three straight state championships at North high school. Mm-hmm. And that for one is y'all set this, y'all set the standard for all high schools, not just in Minneapolis. Okay. Uh, there are some schools that have success, and they always talk about yeah. who's more successful, North for Hopkins and all that other stuff. Whatever. Yeah. Not going to talk about it. Yeah. But what were some of the struggles and the challenges and the adversity you had to face on that three straight is hard, okay? <laughs> like, that's not easy at all. I mean, going into the 1995 season, um, you know, coming off of the 94-95 season, we had a decent a decent year. We were bouncing back, you know, those years prior to that, I'll say 92, they went to the, went to the championship, 91, 92, 93, 94. Those were kind of like down years for North as far as winning and going to state and, and and things like that. And so I was there, I was the water boy at that time. So I was able to see, I was able to see, you know, going back even before in the 91 and the winning tradition from 1980 on. Okay. I I, I was, I was a young guy, but I was always around, excuse me. And so coming up from the winning and in the eighties and then getting to the nineties and having that down period, that really hurt my heart. You know, that really hurt my, and and just seeing the, 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 the butt kickings that we were taking to these teams and definitely losing to the Minneapolis city conference teams was so, it was just a no-no back then. And and for us to be losing to those teams, don't get me wrong, Roosevelt uh, had a good team back in there, the Tex winner teams and, and um, uh, those guys like that. They had a good run. And South with Jason Daisy and, and those teams, they had a very good run. But just watching that, it really hurt me. And I knew that I was, we were more than that. We were winners, you know what I mean? And so watching that, I was able to use that as motivation. B. I was like able to like when I get there and I always said when I get there, I'm going to show that we are winners. You know, and I always had that in in the back of my mind. And I was always in the back of my mind when I was in the gym working out and uh, just playing against a different competition. I wanted everybody to know that, you know, Elamine was on the court when he was on the court. You know, I didn't I didn't want a game. I didn't want a quarter. I didn't want a few minutes to go past where. I was playing in a game and nobody, I didn't put an imprint on a game. I didn't make a play or do something to where people would be like, damn, Elamine did that. So that was my motivation for playing. And that was the way that I thought. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it proved to be uh, successful. But as to answer your question, those early teams coming on, you know, that first year we were battling with ourselves because, you know, we were all the men coming from the different teams that we played with. Um, you know, Chris Rainey was always the guy, who, whoever team he was on. Yeah. Uh, Jabbar always played a, a big time role, whatever team he played on. Izzy Lockhart was always the man on his team where he came from. And I was definitely, you know, the the uh, the one who, you know, who had the crown on his head going in. in. But, you know, we always we all played a, a very big part on the team and us having to jail and us having to tone down and say, hey, we're not going to be able to average. We're not all going to be able to average 20. Some of us are going to have to average, you know, the the, the measly 10 and 12. It's just the way that it's not enough balls for everybody. But I think once we all con- calm down and had an opportunity to, to, to get to know each other as basketball players, because we knew each other um, pretty good as friends, but get to know each other, you know, even as young men, but at the better or, or the more we got to know each other as basketball players, we, we, was, we said, okay, you know what? 
it's okay if you score 20 tonight because I'll play my role, you know, but when I have the hot hand, everybody would understand who had the hot hand that night and we would let that person shine. We weren't trying to steal the shine from each other and try to force things. And I think that was just the compliment of that team and, and the, I guess the the greatness of that team was allowing the next man to shine because in a whole, when we win, we all get the the, the notoriety and, and and the kudos and the congratulations and all that pats on the back and whatnot. But that was for the first year um, the controversy within the team, so to speak. Like uh, just getting to understand that everybody's going to have a big night. Just relax and wait your turn. And, and I think for some of us, it was easier than others, but we got it going. And, and that year we went undefeated. And, and that was the main reason why we were able to go undefeated is because we allowed our teammate when it was his night to shine. And um, I think we all had multiple great games, uh, you know, individual performances. But as a team, we always were there to have each other's backs. And that's the reason why we were able to go undefeated. I, you know what's crazy? Something that you said. Uh, so I coach at Creighton Durham Hall right now with Crystal. And uh, we always tell our players, like, your role. And sometimes she came up with an analogy that Gino and, uh, Gino said after uh, Paige had a phenomenal game. Minnesota, mm-hmm. Shout out to Paige, by the way. Phenomenal Minnesota kid at UConn right now. Wow. Uh, straight hooping, by the way. She could have played with us. She could have played with y'all, too. She could have played with us. <laughs> hey, hey it's it just, and I don't mean to get off the, the subject. I know we can, like, get on this subject later on, but it's just so many kids, and it just really shows the, it's something in the water, you know, with all the Minnesota kids that's performing so highly on a national level and just not, you know, playing their roles, but actually starring on those teams. But we'll get into yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. You, I'm another kid, another freshman, Jalen Suggs. I'm like, dude, okay, these kids is killing it. Um, but no, the crazy thing that you just said is that roles, right? And I want all the athletes that's listening to this is that sometimes your role is just to bring the piano to the concert and you got to be okay with that. Gino said he had an interview and he said, he said, yeah, Paige had a phenomenal game, but sometimes there's a person that needs to get the piano to the stage. If she had a concert, she has to play, play this orchestra, right? Yeah. Your role in getting the piano to the stage is just as important as getting the, you the person that's actually playing the piano. If the piano's yeah. not there, she can't perform. And so I think a lot of times athletes miss that because they feel like they need to be the star or they need to have 20 and 15 every game. And sometimes it's not your night. Your role was to set that screen hard and roll and get a rebound. That was your role. And I don't want all the athletes listening to this to miss that. That reason why y'all were successful is because everyone bought into the idea that tonight's might not be my night, but I'm going to make sure it's, if it's his night, I'm rolling with him. And that's huge. I definitely got to let them know that because I tell my girls this all the time. That's, right. that's how you're successful. Especially for team sports. Now, if you want to play golf, you can focus your own performance. <laughs> but basketball, <laughs> right. that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And so knowing that, speaking of UConn and Paige, I've always been super curious uh, because right. you going to UConn is the reason why I went to Providence College. And you don't even know that. You didn't even get to formally. I think we've met each other in passing, but this is like okay. the first time we've ever had a conversation. Mm-hmm. And you were like the first person that I knew that went somewhere different. Like going to the East Coast. Everyone stayed Midwest, went down South or West. No one went okay. in. And yeah. so I always was fascinated to know why you can. Wow. Um, well, I'll give you the whole backdrop on the whole recruiting process. So uh, I'll just start. I took my visits to University of Minnesota. I took my official visit. Um, I went to Georgetown. I went to Kansas. And I went to, I visited UConn. And uh, UConn was the only school that I actually had the opportunity to play with the team. And it's a kind of like a, a legend go around in Connecticut about, you know, when I played the pickup games with the team, how, you know, this young uh, senior in high school, you know, came and played pickup with the guys who were telling all the players what to do, pointing guys in the right direction, just being the leader of the team. And I wasn't even on the team yet. And so when you go back to Connecticut, I'm sure pages, you know, heard that story plenty yeah. of times, but it, it, it's something that was just into, in my character to do. You know, and I wasn't trying to be somebody that I wasn't. But being that I got able to play with that team and me knowing a a little bit about the team from the years from the year prior when they won the postseason NIT, I knew they had players on the team. And I when I played with them, I just really had the sense of all they're missing is a player like me, some guy that's vocal, that can come out and lead the guys and put the guys in the right position and and not be a a, a asshole about it or or a jerk about it, but do it in in the sense to where, you know, the guys know where you're coming from and coming from a good place because we all want to win, you know, and that's why we're here. We're coming to win. We're trying to win 
the national championship. And that's at the front. That's at the formal. So let's not make it personal. This is not anything personal. It was me, you know, trying to be the extension of the coach on the court right. and helping us to win. And, and that was my mentality. And when I played with the team, I just saw that. And so, you know, unfortunately for Minnesota, you know, um, they were just coming off uh, the final four with Bobby Jackson and that team and um, you know, had a great run. But that next season, I didn't think that we had the, they had the team that could make a, a national championship run or a Big Ten run, uh, so to speak. So I kind of didn't want to go to Minnesota. I, I knew Kansas was, was a great team, but, you know, we're just going to be good for one year because Paul Pierce and Rafe LaFrance was going to be seniors and they were going to leave. So. Um, in Georgetown, they just didn't have the team that I thought, you know, could compete on, on a national level. So UConn was basically, it was the smart choice for me. You know, if I wanted to win and win now, that was the choice to make. And, uh, went back to my family and, you know, and let them know how I was feeling and they supported me a hundred percent. And even though my mom and my dad really wanted me to go to Minnesota and the first time anyone has heard this, I'm going to put it on you, B like we had a, we really had a fight that night in the Elamine household about that. You know, my parents really wanted me to go to Minnesota and, um, you know, it was a, a, a family, you know, discussion and, you know, they allowed me to, to have it my way and let me, you know, make the decision for myself. And I, I hope that it was the right decision and it proved to be because we were able to win a national championship. And um, that's all that I wanted. I want to be written down in history. I wanted to be remembered. Uh, when I because I'm playing this game and, you know, that's the ultimate the, the ultimate, uh, you know, goal is to win a national championship. And we did it. And it was a great feeling when we did it. You know, what's crazy. That's so funny. That you said my mom wanted me to stay home, too. She was not. My mom, my mom's originally from New York. And I was like, okay. nah, like, I'm, I got to get out of here. Like, that's where I'm supposed yeah. to be anyway. But that's funny mm-hmm. that you said that mom was she was devastated when I was like, I'm going to Providence. She said, what do you mean? What do you mean? Going to <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I'm, and, and it, it only helped, you know, going out to the East Coast because coming up, I was an East Coast hip hop guy. You right. know what I mean? So I was EPMD, you know, BDP, all the East Coast groups. You know, I was down with that hip hop scene. So I thought I was from New York anyway. So me going out there, <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it just solidified that basically. You oh, know, and, right. and, oh. and in high school, you know, I played for the New York Gauchos. I played with the Long Island Panthers with Lamar Odom um, and, and his great players out there. So but I was already a part of that scene. And like I said, well, I me never going out there for that college. You play with the Gauchos. That's funny. So did I. That's how I got, yeah. got introduced to being out east. I stayed with my grandma the first yeah. summer and I was like, I need to do something okay. different. And that's what happened. But that's crazy. Okay. So speaking of your yeah. national championship, you mentioned right. that. Uh, y'all beat Duke, man. Mm-hmm. And and that's insane. And by the way, Duke is struggling right now. That's a whole other side note. <laughs> but I, I, I think uh, Coach Krzyzewski, he was trying to get them out of it when he said, why are we playing in Corona time? So he's seen the, the writing on the wall early in the season. But, you know, hey, you got to fight. Not, like, not they like, suffering. <laughs> so what was it like? So knowing that they suffering, that's 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 a shame. I'm a Duke fan. I, I hope they figure it out. Mm. But knowing that uh, this segment is called March Madness and it says it for a reason. All the athletes that I'm talking to play during March Madness. Right. What was that environment like? I never got an opportunity to play in March Madness in my career. I was devastated. What was that like playing it and then also winning a national championship? Wow. Um, it was it, it was all what it's cracked up to be, you know, playing amongst 60,000 and, um, you know, repping your whole region, basically. You know, it, it, it was just, man, it was the basketball at its highest level at the time. And so uh, it felt good to be, you know, pushed out and playing in front of so many people and just solidifying that, you know, we're one of the best teams in the nation. And that's when the best players play their best though, is in the postseason in March Madness. And March Madness really started for us in the Big East tournament. You know, we got an opportunity to go from Connecticut, small stores, Connecticut, small college town, to go to Manhattan and stay in Manhattan, stay in the World Trade Center Marriott for a few days, you know what I mean? And and, and live it up basically, ordering room service, the corned beef sandwiches, <laughs> the corned beef sandwiches at this deli right by the, oh my God, I'm talking about, I had like three or four of them a day, but. <laughs> On another note, but having the opportunity to um, to stay in the World Trade Center, Marriott, and now that is gone, you know, it, it, it kind of hits home um, a little bit more and, and makes it even more special. Um, you know, I've been on top of the World Trade Center numerous times, and um, it, it was just a, a family outing. All my family would always come. 
uh, to New York doing the biggest tournament. It was just a great time. And uh, so starting there and being able to to win the, the biggest tournament was a big deal, you know, and the awards were, the, were, were that week as well. I remember my freshman year, I was um, I won the freshman of the year yeah. um, in the Big East. And it was a big deal, man, because, you know, coming from Minnesota, which wasn't a college. Uh, it basketball wasn't a basketball state. state. You know, it wasn't. And supposedly it supposedly. wasn't. But but having, um, you know, so much success as a freshman, I think that um, or I hoped that it, it would help. Um, other players back in Minnesota um, to give them some some shine also. So uh, it was a big deal. And, and then going into the tournament, you know, you know, you're going to get everybody's best shot, being that every time we were in the tournament, we were two or one seed. So we were always going to get the opposing team's best shot. And and, and we did. You know, uh, I remember fairly Dickerson, Elijah Allen went for 43 on us uh, in the first game as a freshman. Yeah. Yeah. If, if we wouldn't have uh, you know, if I didn't have 28 and Rip had 30 that game, we would have lost that game because he he just put on a show. He was hitting deep. Stephen Curry, Stephen Curry threes. He was raining them. So oh, he, was trying, he was trying to come. He came. With uh, he was trying to come from here. Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be hungry. Go and, and try to 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 beat the giant killer. Or try to be a giant killer. That's what March right. Madness is all about for the Cinderella teams to take out the big team. So. You know, it was a great environment. Like I said, sixty thousand and having the opportunity to perform on such a, 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 a stage was was great for me because I always wanted the big stage. You know, man. And the crazy thing is, y'all murdered it. Oh man, I, you got some game film. I need to insert some film oh, before. Yeah. This. Oh, yeah. Can you? Can you? Can you watch your national championship game? I would like for you to email me some clips so I can add some so people can actually see. Like I think, granted, me right. Everybody in Minnesota, if they don't, never, they never heard your name. I don't know, especially being basketball players, they've been sleeping mm-hmm. on the rock. But mm-hmm. I just know out east how respected your name was. You got to think I was a kid from Minnesota, so right. like, man, I'm from Minnesota. So, oh yeah, that's the LME from Minnesota too. My like, yeah, we went to the same high school. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that kind of gave me a little uh, bit. Of yeah. It put Minnesota on the map because mm-hmm. it's like I'm out east, and you knowing that you're the only other person outside myself that went east. It, it, you know, it gave me a little clout. Just, just throwing that out there. You no, know, sure. I said, yeah, you no, know. And, 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 and it was supposed to, and I'm glad that that it did because you know what I'm saying being that you're from Minneapolis, it was all love. You know what I mean? So I'm glad that it, it helped you in your and your uh, how should in your celebrity out there. But hey, right. I, I, you, Look, I, I, you I, got I, out there on your own. You got out there on your own. So you, you didn't. I, I, I worked That's my butt off. Faith did not allow me to do nothing, right. less, nothing less. Okay, right. Faith right. Patterson, she was tough on me. Right. But so knowing that. You won a national championship. You won state championships. Some people would be satisfied with that. But then mm-hmm. in addition to that, you played for 17 years professionally. Like, oh, what yeah. was that like? Not only did you play in the NBA, you played overseas in multiple countries. Like, some people can never fathom that. The thing that they fell in love with at whatever age is going to be paying their bills. Like, what was that like for 17 years to have a successful career? Oh, man, it, it was the best. I lived my dream, B. I mean, it ain't no way else to say it. I lived my dream. You know what I mean? And um, it got able to travel the world because I play basketball. You know, not a lot of people can say that. You know what I mean? And I'm very happy of, of my experience. Uh, I, I say I wouldn't trade it for the world. You know, if I had a multi-million dollar deal in the NBA, I would trade it for that. But other than that, you know, I, I, I like the the experience that I had. You know, like you said, playing in over ten countries. Um, you know. I, I got to live my dream for a season playing in the NBA, but you know, Europe was, was my calling. So I was able to play at a high level in Europe for many years, win multiple MVPs, win mo- multiple championships in different countries. So um, I, I hope the fans around the world, you know, um, appreciate what I gave to the game, what I gave to their team. Um, and, uh, I hope to be remembered as a player that always played at a high level and, and was a winner. And, and that's what I wanted to be respected more than anything is that I'm a winner because, um, winning speaks for itself and you can't take that away. And so, uh, I just hope that the fans appreciate the hard work that I put into the game because, uh, it was a lot of sacrifices that I had to make. I mean, when I played overseas, B, uh, you know, I would leave in August and a lot of times I wouldn't come back to June. And, and, and so, you know, maybe I got to come back for Christmas or something to see my family. So when everybody, you know, they they, they saw me um, in the summertime with uh, um, the fruits of my labor, so to speak, you know, with, with the ni- nicer things, you know, it came at a price. It, it wasn't, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? So 
Um, I didn't want I don't want youngsters to get, you know, that misconception that it, uh, it, it wasn't difficult because it was I had to work at my craft. Um, you know, for me, I'm only five, nine and three quarters. So I want your your, your average basketball player prototype point guard. And so I had to work very hard um, to stay uh, playing at a high level. So I'm very happy that I'm able to last that many years. Like it was something also that you tapped in. It says that the you had to put the work in. Like a lot of these kids don't understand. That's what I tell my athletes all the time. I was the first person in the gym and I was the last person to leave. And that was an everyday thing. Like mm-hmm. I was that dedicated to my craft because I didn't have anything else. Like if I didn't play basketball, I wouldn't have went to college. Like yeah. I, mean, I had the grades, but college wasn't never that thought until I picked up a basketball. And so like yeah. you got to understand that dedication. Like I'm six foot one and a half. Hmm. So that, that's good for me as right. a female, but knowing that you always, when I, I'm like, he has to be short and stocky. He was short and stocky. I'm like, he is killing these dudes. And so, <laughs> like you played as like you were six, nine. So hmm. I know you say you five, nine, but you played big. And okay. I, I'm, and something that you also said was that you want to be like, hope your fans appreciate and you remember as a winner, you yeah. talk to someone that's 29 years old. When you start, when you started at North, I didn't even touch a basketball and mm. i'm sitting here in awe just being able to sit here and have a conversation with you and talk about all your success and i'm i had to touch the ball in six years and i'm like oh my <laughs> god i feel like i'm talking to my superhero because that's what you did to the game for me so i don't know but anybody else get out of this episode mm-hmm. or the episodes all the people that i'm talking to i've looked up to since i picked up a basketball and i appreciate everything you gave to the game and how much you challenged me from an athlete as an athlete from a distance you didn't even know so mm. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Of course, I appreciate of course. That. Into some other stuff. You are doing some phenomenal things yeah. in the community. Family first life, right? And doing yeah. some research on you, I felt like it was phenomenal because I always preach the importance of life insurance. Hmm. And I'm kind of tired of seeing the GoFundMe for funerals. Oh, my God. Right? Like, so what do you, listen, I know you see it. So what do you think, like, why have you, for one, joined this mission to do that? And how is important is it for the black community, us, to know the importance of life insurance? Well, that, that is the exact reason why I got into it is because our community, the people that look at like us and our demographic, you know, uh, they don't. Um, it's just I think it's the education. It's not that, that we don't want it. It's just that we don't know about it enough about life insurance. You know, for, for some of us, death is hard to speak about. You know, it's taboo, so to speak. And, and or it's bad luck. You know what I mean? So having to get over that stigma is, is something that's not always easy to do, but it's something that needs to be done. And, and just for the simple fact for the, our funeral, like you said, there's too many of us having to suddenly passing away, um, yep. you know, not preparing for it and, and not being able to have something set aside, some money for the funeral. The average funeral is $10,000 or more right now. And our average cremation is coming up with maybe $6,000, you know, maybe a little bit less. So depending on what you want. So it, it's not cheap um, for your funeral or cremation. So for our community uh, to have to rely on GoFundMe's or to pass around the basket at the mosque or to pass around the basket at the church. It, it, it's just not, it's something that we shouldn't do if we don't have to, especially if we can plan for it. And so getting that education out there and helping our community um, with life insurance, explaining the type of, of whole life policy, a term policy, mortgage protection, okay, annuities, just getting the research, the education out there about these different programs that will help us and, and for us to save for our funeral and not only save, but to leave something behind for our loved ones, because that's what we're basically yeah, going to do it for. So we're not a burden on our family when we do pass. So um, just getting that education out there be is something that I thought was, um, you know, w- was definitely a, a priority and needed to be done. And First Family Life gave me the opportunity um, to do that. You know, I, I own my own agency. I'm independent and they're allowing me to do what I do and, and just for it to be on me. I don't have to rely on anyone. So it was just a perfect fit for oh, me. Absolutely. And what you with that mission is phenomenal. Uh, when I seen it, I was like, for one, I wanted to talk to you personally about it myself, like no moving online, because I know that you work it for yourself. And I was like, OK, he has yeah. his own little thing in line. But what you tapped into is something that's huge for us. Right. Yeah. I'm happy that I'm in a position that I have multiple life insurance policies. Good. Yeah. Once my mom's brother passed at 35. She was like, no, everyone, you don't know when your time is. And you got to right. set yourself up for success. And I so wish we I, all thought like that. 
Right. And so I want everybody on here. I know it's going to be a lot of young athletes watching this, but hit him up, have a conversation. So your grandma, your grandpa, yourself, you don't have to be 50 years old talking about life insurance. You never know what that time is. <laughs> yes. You got to set yourself up for success because a lot of the times, a lot of black families are leaving their families in debt. <laughs> like mm. literally as soon as they pass, it's debt. It's no longer like, Oh, there's nothing being passed down generations. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's definitely is, is, is serious. And that is definitely what, what, what is happening. And like you said, when, when a parent or a loved one, you know, it, uh, passes, then like you said, their debt goes onto the family, especially their funeral, you know, their immediately goes onto the family. So having, having something set up to where uh, your family doesn't have to come out the pocket because at that time you're just supposed to get mourned right there. And your family is just supposed to make the, the necessary arrangements uh, for the funeral. You're not supposed to have to worry about getting the money for the funeral, where you're going to have the funeral. No, it's not supposed to go like that. The, you're supposed to have some set aside to where you just make the arrangements and mourn your loved one, mourn their life, celebrate their life, however you want to do it. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's what I'm trying to get out there and for our community to, to start to embrace. <clears throat> Absolutely. So hit him up. I put all the information in the description box on Apple, all of it. You'll find it. Yeah, I have his email, his contact information. I think this is a movement that we all have to get in line with because we never know the time nor the hour. Mom always tells me that since I was a little bitty girl. And so lastly, um, super appreciative for this, but you have children of your own hooping mm -hmm. and playing basketball. And I also wanted to kind of tap in and ask you some different things of people who aspire, right? Like not only are you watching your boys go through it, mm -hmm. but what advice do you have for athletes to aspire to have the, to, to be able to obtain the level of success that you have as an athlete? Well, I think for one, when, when you're young and you're in high school, and it doesn't have to be in high school, it's, when you're older and adult too. But like I said, when, early on, hanging around the right people that's trying to do the things you're trying to do. You know, if you want to be an athlete, don't hang around someone who's not trying to be an athlete that wants to do something negative. That's that's not trying to get to the same position that you're trying to get to is my first uh, bit of advice. And and stay humble. You know, I, 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 there's nothing wrong with being confident. You know, I was one of the, the, the highest, <laughs> I had the most confidence in, in the world. There's nothing wrong with that, but staying humble and, and just, you know, it's, it's always best. Staying humble is always best. I'm not here to preach or anything like that, but I just think that humility is what's best and um, it brings more blessings to you. So, um, you know, hanging around the right people, staying humble and definitely you got to put the work in. You know, I, I think in these times right now, we have a lot of uh, self-appointed uh, you know, self-appointed score or self-appointed um, goats out here. You know, I, I'm the type from the old school that I let, I like to let the other people say the, those type of things about me. I can't say it about myself because, uh, you know, I can say I'm anything, you know what I mean? And it might not be true. Other people have to call you the goat. Other people have to say that you're this, that you're that. So that's type of, 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 of feedback and, and a type of notoriety is always, always what I wanted to seek out and always wanted to hear from people. So um, I think that's something that the younger generation could also adopt, but keep going about your business, you know, business minded, being focused on whatever you want to do. If that's sports, if it's not sports, it's being an entrepreneur or whatever you uh, uh, obtain to do or uh, lead out to do, set out to do, just do it a hundred miles an hour. All right. And put in the work and, and it, you're going to be successful. That was beautiful. Look, my big clap. Now that was phenomenal. And I hope that everyone that is listening to this can get everything that they actually need. And I'm I'm happy we I'm giving you your flowers. I'm happy that I got an opportunity to finally speak to you in Thank person. You. Even though Thank we you. see each other in passing, I've said hi to you like when okay. I was younger and when I got older. But okay. it's just nice to be able to just to hear the stories and talk to you about all the greatness. But y'all, this is phenomenal. Um, I'm super excited to release this one, you guys. If uh, all his contact information will be in the description box, um, ways that you get in contact with him. I can't wait to see his game film, and I'm gonna be adding in before and after. Hey, so I want to see. I want to see some like some old. And he used to wear his jersey super baggy, y'all. I don't know I if I, I seen some film myself. I oh, see okay. like six sizes too big. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you so much, y'all, for listening and um, tuning in. And always, y'all, peace, love, happiness, and success. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Talk is fit. Talk is fit. <laughs>